Hello, everybody. Today it's music of Agatha Bucker Grandal. This is a composer from the late 19th century, a Norwegian pianist and a good friend of Edvard Grieg. They both died in the same year, 1907. I didn't really know much about this composer until I started digging into some things about her. I had really thought of her mostly as a pianist and maybe a composer of a few light works, but she has a substantial amount of music she composed. I think this is probably something really worth exploring. The piece that I'm going to be playing for you is Opus 35, three piano pieces, which dates from 1894. She remained active as a composer right through the end of her life. Um, so this is really kind of a middle, middle area, middle era from her, from her works list. The three pieces to my ears, you know, sound like, sure, it's kind of like salon music, but it's interesting music just the same. It's not just light pop music. It, which surprised me. I didn't realize that she was uh, capable of that kind of artistry. Um, so it's, it's, it's interesting to explore this for me. The pieces in style are reminiscent, I think, from my years of Franz Liszt. She did study with Liszt, and that kind of approach to chromatic harmony does you know, find a display in this music. I noticed especially in the second movement, which is a slow movement, you have a lot of chromatic, expressive harmony. Um, and it, especially at the very end, there's a cadence, which I remember learning about in music theory class when I studied with Mr. Nutting. Uh, he was an undergraduate music theory professor teaching us about augmented sixth chords. And you, typically the augmented sixth chord, which is there, which would resolve in that manner. And I remember he gave us a few examples of other core, you know, resolutions. One would be, so it's, it's almost like what would be called a plagal cadence. And he really equated that with uh, list. So we have that here in the, at the end of the second piece. You can listen for that. And she extends it with a more chromaticism um, in the cadence. So there's some fairly typical romanticisms, I guess you could say, um, from uh, this composer. But I like her music. I mean, I've, what I've heard so far, I really enjoy. The last movement is a very superficially reminiscent piece. Um, it reminds you of um, Impromptu by Schubert, the famous one that begins. <laughs> It's, uh, it's, it goes off in a different direction and probably is, I don't know, it's a good piece. <laughs> it's not Schubert though, but um, it's definitely fun to listen to and it's a uh, fair amount of work. It's, it's a bitch to play, but I'm, I'm glad that uh, I've had a chance to explore these and there's an awful lot more music by this composer that really deserves to be heard. I think people have gone and, com and uh, compiled a lot of this stuff and onto some CDs and other sources, I guess, you can get this, this music. So it's probably worth checking out. So I encourage you to, to give a listen to it. I've left a few links in the comments below uh, for, the, for the curious.